Uh, yeah, we'd love to know your name as well. Okay, Giggles has joined from Jaipur. Awesome. Mr. Gupta has joined from Delhi. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Who else? Kiria is from Delhi. So who is who has joined just now? Welcome again, and uh, we have started the webinar. We take a few more minutes before everyone joins. Um, and we would love to know from where are you connecting. We'd love to know that where are you from, what are you doing, and what piqued your interest to join this session. And thank you so much for joining. Three more minutes, guys, and then we are on. Shrishta has joined from Delhi. Um, Bhavya, I will share the screen in a few minutes. I just wanted to know, okay, Kavisha is from Kanpur. A lot of people are from Delhi, then Jaipur, Kanpur. Awesome. Awesome, guys. So one of my uh, very old dear colleague, uh, Shobit sir, is here. Uh, and he has joined from Canada. Hi, Shobit sir. What time is it? You're on mute, I think. Sorry, oh. I didn't realize it. Hello, Shruti, ma'am. Hi. And thank you for for this meeting. And I was waiting for it since yesterday, since I got to know about it. Thanks. And obviously, this is the first thing I'm doing in the day. So it's 7.30 in the morning. Oh, thank you for joining so early. You know, we made you get up that early on a weekend. Thank that, you. That, that's normal routine. Mm -hmm. With two kids, you have to get, wake up early. I know, I know. That's our story, all of us. <laughs> Agree. Awesome. So just two more minutes. I, I would want to wait before we go ahead. Anna, can you share from where have you joined? Uh, Shruti, ma'am, did you ask uh, anything to do? No, no, I asked from where are you joining? I am at my friend's place. Can you please write in chat? Thank you. Okay, guys, I'll just share the screen. Bhavya, my screen is uh, in full screen. Is it OK? Yeah, it's to... fine. Do you want me to wait one more minute, few minutes more, or should we start? Uh, I think let's wait for one more minute, and then we can begin. OK, great. Okay, guys, it's four five, and yeah, I would love to begin. So, welcome once again. And uh, this is a very important topic, in fact, very close to my heart that we are going to discuss today brainstorm it together, and that is from screen to books. I'm Dr. Shruti Shankar Gaur, I'm founder of Redu. I have a PhD in inclusive education. I'm a poet, writer, blogger, editor of many children's books. And uh, I have my academic uh, writing and even non-academic writing in different uh, national and international journals and books. 
I'm also associated with the Digital Economist, where I work as a director of their global think tank. And I'm also working with a uh, Canada-based uh, enterprise, which is called SG Productions. Uh, and I'm their uh, creative and strategic partner, Asia Market. So welcome to this session of webinar. And I thank you so much again for joining us. Let's start bringing the elephant in the room. Why today's kids aren't into beauty? That's the main topic that we are going to discuss today. Think about it. Where they are, what are they doing, what they are into. Needless to say that they are born, they are the children born in the technological era. They are the children who are have gadgets all around them since birth. And what to tell about them? Even all of us are into gadgets who are not from the era of gadgets and this technology and Wi-Fi and smartphones, smart TVs. We all are being engulfed in that. That is one of the main reasons that our children aren't into reading today. But where are it there? Screens, we all know, you know, screens have the instant dopamine that provides. Dopamine is the pleasure hormone, you know, that secretes pleasure, instant pleasure. And the effect that it has, you know, reduced each one of our focus time from 2.5 minutes to 45 seconds within a span of two decades. It's alarming. It's really alarming. And the worst part is that our children, you know, are the, our, our children are the ones who are being impacted by this the most because their reflexes, their focus, their uh, so many things are under, you know, they are being nurtured, they are in the building stage, and they are being hit the most by it. I would like you to stay with me here because we have part this whole session in a very, you know, systematic and beautiful way before we bring it to reading because we have to first ask ourselves that why today's kids are not into reading. Second thing that I would like to think, you know, just let a child sit idle for one minute, not even one minute. The child will return back and say, oh, I'm getting bored. I'm bored. There's nothing to do. It was just one minute or it was just 30 seconds. How can you be bored within 30 seconds? You need some time for that. But today's child don't know that. They have lost the privilege that I think if we go back in memory lane, at least we parents will understand that, you know, there used to be fun and boredom, and we used to get bored so much. Write in chat box if you agree that yes, we used to on the long summer, you know, afternoons during summer vacations or long nights in winter, we used to get bored, a lot bored. But that didn't mean that we were lonely or we didn't have things to do. But today's children, they don't understand boredom. They don't understand what is it to just sit idle. What is it to stay, sit just with your thoughts? How do we absorb, how do we observe the world around us? Um, they have just missed that part of their, you know, in their upbringing. And I think the onus and responsibility somewhere lies with us parents as well. And I would say each one of you, each one of you must pat your back because you are here. I am here. We all here together are in a session where we are trying to we'll put an effort to ensure that we bring our kids from that digital world into the world of books. At least we'll give it a try. So congratulations for being here because we are going to do it. I would like to ask you, why do you want your child to be there? Just take a moment, think about it, put it in the chat. Why do you want your child to be read? I know why I wanted my daughters to be readers long back before they were born. I always wanted my kids to be into reading. Can you just share your thoughts here? Bhave, can you please read me the chats because I am not able to view them while I am sharing screen. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. I'll keep it posted. So uh, Sanjay Gupta is saying that a book is a man's best friend. Yes, I and Somebody mentioned that it makes them more imaginative. Imagination, creativity. And that's the opposite. So beautiful, whoever's ever resonated in that. Thank you so much. Because when you're looking at screen, you are just consuming the content. You are a passive learner, even if you're if we say you're learning. But when you're reading, 
then you are an engaged learner and you are just reading the words and you are just thinking and visualizing it so you are active learner when you are read so absolutely true and uh, yeah i would love to know uh, if anyone you can write why do you want your child to be read and that is what the session is for and that is why you have joined this session um, i would love to know what are your thoughts about it Bhavya, do we get any messages as we move ahead, please? Yeah, somebody said uh, that reading is fun and it allows you to learn new things and be creative. Yeah, only a re reader would say that. Yeah, absolutely. Reading is super fun. For me, if you ask me, it's a very, it's a personal quest and this is the reason I started reading a few years back. So there's a quote by George Orwell um, and it hit me hard. It said that if you cannot write well, or if you cannot read well, you cannot write well. If you cannot write well, you cannot think well. And if you cannot think well, someone else will do the thinking for you. Just think about it. Are we fine with our children being led by someone else? Do we want our children to be followers or do we want our children to be leaders? And if we want them to become leaders from being followers, first thing that we have to ensure is that our children don't become consumers. They become creators. And the bridge that gaps that beautifully is a habit of reading. Because a reader's mind is never a narrow mind. A reader's mind is always a thinking mind. A reader's mind is always the one who questions the status quo. And we want our children, if you want a better future, if you want a better world than we are living in, then we have to ensure that our children develop that reading mind, that learning, learning mind, you know, who's always evolving mind with, with neuroplasticity at its core. And I've been reading this book lately, you know, The Quantum Economy. I hope you all can see that. And uh, it's by a great philosopher, Anders Indeset. And uh, he's from Netherlands. He says this thing, and I, I wanted to put it here, you know, share with you, um, because he said this thing that the economy, quantum economy in this book, he said that economy, future economy is going in a way where you are going to have two workforces. One is going to be creator and one is going to be the consumer. And creators are going to be the 10% of population. Consumers are going to be the 90% of the population is going to be this. And there is no middle ground here. And he said that you can see this in early, if you go to schools, if you go to colleges, and you just observe children, you observe the students. He's, and his, his analysis is that children either are very sharp because they are getting, um, they are using the power of technology in the information that they are bombarding, they are being bombarded with, they are using that information, and they are super sharp, then you and I were in our generation ever, or they are super dumb because they are just consuming all the content that is being dumped into them. It's the Gigo effect. And he said that there is no average student in the future or, or of today even. There is going to be this big gap and this big gap eventually will be in the workforce. People will be either very rich or they will be very green. And this, when I read this, I was like, oh my God, this, this is something. Where would I want my children to be? Definitely, each one of us would want our children to be creator, to be in that creative zone. And for that to happen, reading is the easiest, simplest medium that for, uh, that can be. And that is why, if you ask me, why do I want my child to be a reader? I have solid, solid research back to back, back up my wish that they become a reader. Uh, OK, so. Boom. Before we start about, you know, the science behind reading, before we start about practical tips, before we start about all this session is about, I would like to take you a few steps back. Because reading is nothing, but reading is a way to learning. And how do we learn? What is the science behind learning? And it is very seamlessly connected with the science behind reading. So if we can decode, the science behind learning will be able to easily, you know, seamlessly move to the science behind reading. Big reveal. We learn, yes, yes, yes. We learn exactly the same way for the last 300,000 years we have been learning. So if you think 
that, oh, we are an advanced generation. We are now in Bitcoin, Web3. We have, com we have created complex systems. No. We still learn the same way. We are still the same. This, and here I would like to share a beautiful story. Each one of us know this story. But let me narrate it for you. Let me take a few moments for you to just absorb it and maybe view it from a very different perspective. We all know that, you know, Newton was one day sitting under an apple tree. Why was he sitting under an apple tree? I don't know. Maybe his father scolded him that he was being lazy because I'm sure he was lazy. He had time to sit under an apple tree. Or maybe his girlfriend dished him and he was super angry. History didn't note that. But history, what history noted was that an apple fell in front of him. And he was so angry, he looked at the apple and he threw it back. And to his astonishment, he was surprised that apple is falling again. What did he think? That the apple tree would take the apple back? This gave him an idea that apples, oranges, all fruits are falling down. Now think about it. Apples had been falling down for centuries and centuries, centuries. Is this a new thing? Was this anything new that happened? You know, I'm sure um, even Newton had seen apple falling earlier as well, but he never noticed that. He never observed that. This time, he actually observed and took time. And the rest is history. I need not say what happened. Today, we have been, you know, living in a Newtonian world till we move to a quantum world. We are still in the three dimensional Newtonian world. And how did it happen? Just think about it. What just happened? Newton just observed. His first learning began with observation, a curiosity why this apple is falling. I would like to share two experiments here. First is twin conjuncture. Um, Bhavya, if you can share the whole essay here, that would be great in chat for everyone. So uh, Daniel Quinn is my favorite author, my all-time favorite author after, I think, George Orwell. And Daniel Quinn in 1960s, he did an experiment with kindergarten children. What he did was he divided the group into two. Both the groups were provided resource material, books and everything what was required, pen, pencil, copy, books, and everything. One group. You know, teachers would come and take the class, teach them, give them classwork, make them write classwork, um, give them homework. And the other group, nothing that happened. No teacher came, no class, no homework, nothing of that sort. And the only thing that happened was that these two groups were allowed to merge for one hour in the playground. That's it. Three months later, there was a test that he took of both these classes. And guess what? All children, they fared exactly the same. They were at par with each other. You know, if we took out the average, they were in both classes. Children were having the same level of understanding and knowledge. How could that be? That one class, which is not at all taught, which didn't do any classwork, didn't have any homework to do, and the one which was taught, there was no difference in them. Just think about it. Please write in chat. Just question yourself. How can that happen that, you know, Quinn, was surprised to find this finding was that both the groups had same um, comprehension level. They learned the same. How can the level of learning be same? Anyone? Any guesses out there? Bhavya, you will be have to share those. Yeah, I think nobody has understood. You will oh. have to explain it to us. So, oh, uh, should I repeat it? Are, somebody Sorry. guessing kids are naturally inquisitive. I feel like uh, Dr. Shruti has a network problem. So, let's just wait for a minute. I think she'll join back soon. So much. Yeah, Dr. Shudhi, you're back. Okay, great, awesome. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, absolutely. 
children have a natural curiosity. And because they were left with books, they were left with resources, and they were peeking in another class that there is something happening. They were curious at what are they learning. Bhavya, let me know if my voice is cracking. I will change my place. It's perfectly fine. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so uh, yeah, and they were, they just, and that is how they learned. So you don't need a teacher. You don't need anything. As a child, how does a child learn uh, walking, talking, you know, to eat by themselves, to hold a mug? It's, it's just by observing and being curious about the environment around them. And they want to copy, you know, adults. And that's what was King conjecture that he find out, found out that learning is nothing but one simple word, which I'm going to tell you just two minutes later. Before that, I would like to share this project, which is from India. Most of you must have read it. I was in school when this happened, and it was all over the newspaper at that time. And Dr. Sugata Mitra, who led this project, he he was uh, globally you know acknowledged and uh, recognized for this project and what was whole in the project i'm sure most of you are aware of it still i'll just take 2 minutes to tell you so in slums of uh, kalkaji where it started a computer screen uh, was left opened unattended with keyboard just like that and it was observed that children became curious they started to just tip and tap and it started to use it and started to see. And within a few days, they became computer literate without ever anyone telling them and teaching them what to do. And mind you, these were young children. Most of them couldn't even read or write properly. Still, they were they enabled computer literacy, you know. And then Mr. Sugata Mitra, he replicated the same project in different parts, different slums in different parts of the country, and the same result came everywhere. These two experiments reveal this. A very simple term, you might say that, oh my God, I was expecting something big, something you know more complicated. But it's life is simple, my friend. Curiosity, the inherent curiosity in us all, which is there in us all, you know, that is the science behind any, any, any sort of learning. That is the reason. If we are curious uh, to anything, we grasp and learn that very quickly and for example i might listen to the song only once and i will just remember its lyrics how come i was first curious and second thing my curious curiosity led that i have complete focus when i'm listening to that song and that concentration bank led to the learning of lyrics there was no science out there how do we ensure that the science of learning that this curiosity we build in our children how can we do that and we are here actually for that only so i did this um one of my friend you know uh, this is a true story so one of my friends she was very upset she said you know i tried everything everything my son is just not into books and i really want him to be a reader and at first i said i'll chill it's okay um ensure that learning happens medium may vary reading is just one glorified uh, medium of learning but it's not the only medium of learning let's let's accept and face that but still you know so i he was she, he was like yeah she you oh, know he's into this he's into that i'm like okay let's find what is he curious about what is he into and then she told me that you know he uh, he's mad about dinosaurs he loves dinosaurs and he's crazy and he's always he has a small dinosaur and he plays with that i was like why don't you bring a book of dinosaur to him she did that she brought a big big dinosaur book with huge pictures and you know a lot of uh, information small and small small boxes and all that and gave to the child it was the best birthday good gift he could have ever have for three, four months, the child read pages and pages and pages, just being, you know, in awe of those photos and information. And he was always into it. Three months, he mugged up the book like anything. And then he started reading sci fi novels. And after that, he became, a, if I can say, a dragon reader, if there can be a turn about that, he, he became a reader. So that is the best and simplest example. And this happened in front of me, you know, that. 
uh, just piquing the curiosity, trying to follow the curiosity of your child, and you can be one can be a reader. And this is the question we are here for. How do we raise our children as a reading generation? And if you ask me, when we talk about teenagers, it's it's little difficult, but it's doable because teenagers are already engulfed into the world, the digital world. Every teenager. I don't think uh, there is even a single one who is left. And I believe their life is tougher than it could have been yours and mine. I would say this thing. I have done this mistake. That uh, So when I started uh, the reading journey of my children, I was super excited. And I would bring all the books that you know I ever read. And I would want my children to read it. So they were bombarded with Enid Blyton and Reader's Digest and you know, all, 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 all the books. What happened? They didn't open it. They didn't like it. So trust me, it was it was a hard fact when I accepted that, oh, their reading interest is different from mine. They will pick up their own interest. They have their own unique curiosity that they are going to follow. And as a parent, I must respect that their uniqueness. So um, I think we we this is where most parents you know have done this mistake, and this is most of us uh, where we don't follow the child's curiosity, where we don't respect their uniqueness, but we want to impose our own thing into them. Uh, and I learned it the hard way, and that is why I wanted to share it with everyone. These are my two lovely daughters, and uh, there's a story that I would like to tell so that you know that there are different ways there is there is no one way and there is no one right way each each it's a journey of a parent and a child and each has his own journey we all we can do here is just hold our hand uh walk here together and maybe learn from each other's experience and try to experiment and see which works where so my elder one you know she was uh always she has always been into reading and uh Maybe, you know, the first child, the parent is always more about learning through them and they are more into it. And the younger ones are like, okay, you will grow up on your own. So maybe that effect. But yeah, my elder one had always been into reading. And uh, by the time she turned 10, she had read Harry Potter at least seven or eight times the whole series. And uh, but my younger one, she is like one Pataka girl and she's all chirpy and bright and uh, happy go lucky. But if we talk about reading, she was not into it. And as a parent, uh, uh, this is something that I was very particular about. I still am. And uh, I did everything that I could do. <laughs> I took her to libraries, took her to reading sessions. I made her pick her own books. But it was, you know, nothing happened. And eventually, I just gave up. I thought, OK, OK. Like, eventually, it was I had to step back and tell myself that yeah, it's OK. There may be other ways of learning. Maybe for her, I have to find her the way she wants to learn, you know, I have to follow that, follow her curiosity, basically. And it was one fine day we were watching Chronicles of Narnia. And uh, while watching it, I told her that, you know, uh, Prasha, it is based on a book by C.S. Lewis. And uh, the movie finished and she said, Mama, I love Aslan so much. I want to read the book. So that was a journey that she started reading C.S. Lewis and she became she even became bigger, bigger reader than my elder one because there was a point when when she started, she would finish book even in a single day, and I was just fed up of bringing books and books for her. And I was like, okay, stop, stop, start doing your classwork and homeworks, just stop this. So I wanted to share this story just to make a point to emphasize that we must respect the uniqueness of every child. There is no one way. Let them be. Let them learn, grow, nurture in their own manner. And second, follow their curiosity. That, that is the mantra that, you know, if you want to take two things out from this session, these are the first two big takeaways from this session. I would want you to try and apply it in your life, in your way, in your scenario, with your considering the sensibility of your child. 
Third is reading ambience. Of course, this plays a big role because that's how I became a reader. I just, my dad had, um, my dad had been a reader and uh, at home we used to have three or four newspapers, two Hindi, two English. Um, then we used to have magazines, a lot of magazines, English, Hindi at home. And on those long summer afternoons, you didn't have anything to do. We didn't have much to do when we were growing up, but we had that books and magazines spread around us. And that's how I started that, you know, first just reading headings, looking at the photos, just reading small, small blurbs within one page article. And that's, and you never know, you know, within few months, you, you become an avid reader. That's a journey that takes place. So no doubt about it, the importance of book clubs, libraries, reading sessions, book fairs. I remember my dad and I used to get so excited at book fairs. And we, for us, it has been, you know, these places have been the temples. And we would go and bring lots of books for the whole year. And at that time, we didn't have any exposure that, you know, this is number one list. This is top. This is uh, globally famous or whatever. So we pick books according to our sensibilities. But that was fun. So definitely no doubt about it that reading ambience uh, does play a role here. Um, I would like to take uh, a moment of, you know, let's just pause for a moment. Am I going too fast? Is there anything that you know you need to know or something? So please put it in message. Uh, Bhavya, you can also tell me. Uh, yeah, it's fine right now. Okay. okay. Somebody's, is asking, somebody's asking that where can we find book clubs or other reading groups? Oh, lovely. Uh, I think you are at the right place uh, because we do have our reading group. We do have our book club. And uh, please stay with us because we will definitely talk about it at the end of the session. Thank you so much. That's a great question. And uh, especially with teenagers, you know, uh, I think uh, with teenagers, book clubs and uh, reading groups um, that that impacts more and that's that's an easy transition uh, from being a non-reader to a reader. Uh, great question. Thank you. Uh, Redu has its book club, and we will be talking about it soon. The second one, of course, follow your child's curiosity. Do not lead. Don't dare to lead. It's the child is an individual in herself and himself. We should learn from the West, actually, you know, where they treat even a small child at par and give them equal respect. We here in India, um, even if our child becomes like a 50 year old, still we always look at him or her as the child. We never give them that individual uh, individual respect that is required. So follow your child's curiosity. Just trust the child and his or her process. And you will be like amazed by the results. Um, third is reading is a medium to learning and uh, focus on learning and reading. I've said it earlier as well. I've reiterated. There are hundreds of ways to learn. Today in this session, we are talking about reading. Reading is definitely an easy and simplest way to learn and a glorified one, no doubt about this. But as parents, our focus has to be learning. What, what is our child learning? Even if the child is on screen, what is the child learning? So for example, uh, and you have to be innovative as parents. Uh, there are audiobooks, there are graphic novels, there are Kindle, there are Goodreads where you, you know, uh, you just take a Goodreads challenge, how many books I'm going to read. Uh, you can just uh, check uh, reviews, you can check. There are movie adaptation of books. So you reading is medium of, medium of learning. Just focus on learning always. And what is a child learning? Just try to monitor. This I have done and this is very powerful. Because this is based on science of learning. Read half a story to your child. The moment you read half a story to your child and leave it, the, leave it at a point where something amazing is going to happen. So the child is going to say, what happened next? What happened next? And you will be like, I don't know. If you want to know, finish the book. Here's the book. Read it and find out what's out there. So it follows the science of curiosity science of learning, which is that the, you have developed the curiosity, the inherent curiosity towards that story in the child. You have, it's, it's built. And the moment it's at the peak, you leave it. 
Mm -hmm. I can vouch it that most children fall for this trick. I have done it a hundred times. Okay, this this was a wonderful thing that uh, we actually invented. So what uh, we used to do when our children were young. Me, my husband, both my daughters, on a Friday evening or Saturday evening, we would take out time and we would say, okay, we are going to play the, play the library game. So the rules of the library game was that each everyone has to read a book or pretend to read a book. That's fine. But they have to just show that they are reading. And in library, there is always maintained silence, you know, silence. So whoever breaks that silence is going to go to the kitchen and bring water or cold ring or some sort of, you know, treats and chips and all that for everyone else. And believe me, that was a punishment. And no one wanted to become that. So my children used to just try and try looking here and there, but it never lasted even for 60 minutes, 30, 40 minutes maximum. And we were trying to read a book, newspaper, magazine, or book or whatever. And we tried to play this game. And by 40 minutes, whenever whoever broke this, you know, uh, game, there was a laughing riot. And it, it worked beautifully because every weekend my kids would ask me, okay, when are we going to play the library game? They were, they were always looking for it. So even if they were not reading, they were trying to enact, you know, reading. They were at least around that environment of books. The first point that we talked about, that being in the ambience of books and reading. It's a, uh, it's a great uh, way to nurture or inculcate reading habits. So do try it. Give it. To try. This, I actually told you that this worked my younger one. And uh, yes, this does work. And beauty of a... Uh, uh having you know we are in an era which where we have the privilege of uh watching movies and um based on books and you can work either way either you can just tell that okay we are going to read this book and then we are going to watch that movie or watch that movie or read the vice versa thing is that it should come back to reading in some manner here we are at the end of the session um joy of reading together providing the reading ambience this is uh when I have told you, shared with you my journey, so it has been just providing that nurturing reading environment to my children. And I have always, you know, experimented and trial and error. And these were my stories, my journey that I've shared with you. Um, I think maybe helpful or not. But yes, nothing, uh, we cannot emphasize more on the uh, providing the right ambience. And uh, whoever asked this question, um, that uh, where can we find a book club specially designed for teenagers? So Redu at Redu, we we have a book club, especially for teenagers. And uh, what different we do here? I would love to tell you that um, we handpick every book that we read. So it's not it's not just any fiction or nonfiction. We try to rotate books through different genres. So every child first reads the book. We meet every 15 days. Every 15 days we are meeting and we are discussing different perspectives. And I would love, in fact, I would encourage each one of you to join that session because you will be amazed to view the world from the child's perspective. A child views the world very differently from you and I. And it's beautiful. It gives me a lot of hope whenever I'm in the book club and whenever I see, I listen to the different uh, perspectives of children, how they 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 view the story and what is their analysis out of it. So it not only you read the book, reading book alone and reading book in a group, there is a whole lot of difference. So when you are reading book alone, you are actually just uh, in in conversation with the author's thought, but when you are reading a book in a group, it multiply that by ten x. That many perspectives you get, that many that much more learning you take away from them. So of course, we handbook every book. Then uh, we ensure that we nurture the inherent curiosity because we know the science of learning. And the best thing about it, we just not read books. This happened with me. I'm sure this has happened with every each one of you, whether we have watched a movie or whether we have read a book. We have always, you know, made up stories in our head because we are story beings, mind you. Even you will know how Rari says this, that uh, it's our imagination that has taken 
to rule here where we are right now. So we have always created stories, you know, part two, part three, or our version of that book or opera. So yes, we encourage children. We don't impose it. We don't make it compulsory because no, that that's a purpose like. That's what school is for. But we try to, we try to just push the natural education. That if you read it, this is you think, okay, this could have been shown from this perspective, or this can be the part two, or whatever, create a fan fiction. So our book readers, they create fan fiction and we publish it. We publish it on Redu Substack, we publish it on our website, we try to disseminate in different various formats. So the children not only gets to read, the children gets to write, the children, it nurtures inherent creativity and curiosity it builds up imagination and i need not say what reading and writing can do that we talk about grammar or vocabulary and other aspects let's shelve it out let's focus on the important things and there we do that we do that twice a month every alternate sunday at 10 a.m i virtual mode and we are a crazy bunch of uh, uh, passionate and avid readers who love reading and um, yeah um, who just love each other's company and I have myself been part of many reading groups and believe me and trust me I believe that book clubs are the most sacred places on earth with that uh, I, I would uh, just stop sharing I would love to listen to you uh, to any question answers that you have and if you want me to repeat anything if you haven't understood or uh, just one second. Yeah. I would like to take the questions if if you have. Okay, I can read messages now. So thank you, Alka Gaur, for how fun. Karmit, yes, I agree. Uh, the reading does encourage um so i think uh with our book club we do we do manage we have kids who are 10 years old who are nine years old and they are doing great here so uh how old is the child okay uh Um, anyone else, if you have any questions, we still have 15 minutes to go, guys. Wow, awesome. Like, no questions. I was so good. Awesome. That, that's great. <laughs> Um, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Kermit, of course. So like the first book, uh, currently, uh, so there's this, uh, if you have heard of it, the first, just to give you a perspective, uh, we hand, when I say we handpick every book at the book club, basically. So, uh, we, we try not to just go by fiction and nonfiction, uh, just to give you an example. Um, the current book that we are reading is, uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, which is, uh, if you have heard about Japan's uh, Ghibli Productions, which has won many Oscars, it's a famous anime production house. So uh, we have picked a book with that adapt. Patient based on that second which is uh the next one that uh, how do you like so it's a japanese classic uh, he, in a very beautiful manner it it uh, shares the philosophy of life uh and uh, i believe that uh, we teach our children a lot of uh, uh scholastic or academic things we don't teach our children about relationships how to live life we don't teach our children uh, how to address their emotions uh, uh we don't teach our children about the cultural diversity yeah, thank you, Sarah. Uh, so uh, we try to inculcate and, you know, 
ensure that books, we, the books that we choose, uh, they, 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 they help nurture not only curiosity, but make them a better human being um, so that they are emotionally much more evolved. Um, no doubt uh, uh, their IQ is because of the exposure and they are anyway. So I hope that answered my question. Um, still, if you want, uh, Bhavya can share, uh, you know, uh, the list of books that we have been in the, in the mail with. Okay. Most welcome, Kermit. Guys, please uh, feel free to join, to ask us questions, and to fill our form. I've shared the I hope I didn't miss any questions of you. It was a great session and I'm sure everybody really liked it. I hope it really helped. And uh, I just wish, you know, that um, every child and we as parents we are here to just navigate our children and just to hold their hand and walk beside them and i just wish each one of you and your children they you just Dr. Shruti, I think there was a network issue at your end. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is that, am I clear now? Thank you. Yes, reading half a book has worked. It does work because uh, kids fall for it. Every time kids fall for it. My younger one didn't fall for it because she was like, okay, I will wait till eternity till you read the half, rest half of the story to me. But yes, it ha it works. It works, you know. Some kids are smarter, but it, generally it, it works. And library one also, you know, um, they it 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 works definitely it works. So uh, if there is no other question, then we can just close the session. Um, okay, Pallavi has written. Thank you, Pallavi. Uh, Thank you so much. Yes, we, we didn't want, we wanted to have a scientific background in whatever we tell and uh, or our personal experiences. Thank you. Uh, yes, Shobit, sir, please. Uh, thank you so much, Shruti, ma'am, uh, for this wonderful session. Uh, my question is a little bit different. My daughter, she is a vivid reader. Like she, it's just like when you shared about your daughter's story that she, when Hiti, picks up her uh, book, any book. She has her own library. She has her, read all the Harry Potter, the whole series, Narnia and everything. And when she picks up a book from the library, by the way, we are home, she reads half of the book. <laughs> 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 that we have to think. And the very next day she says, now you return it and bring another book for me. So that's frustrating at times, but I love that thing. Uh, the, question I have is that she is a good reader, but not a good writer. She never wants to write. I have tried multiple ways for her to write, to bribe her at times, and but it never worked. 
so and i was also looking at the book club timing unfortunately those timings don't timings. match due to the time difference yeah, so i, I would have it. loved her to join that with other readers and then write something but yeah time difference doesn't allow that so what else can i do like is there anything else in radio where she can join where the time dif- time constraint is not there yeah and- so regarding time constraint uh um uh, I think uh, Pallavi, who who manages uh, book club, you know, uh, she will be in contact with you. So we will figure out a time if our evening and your morning, if something like that, you know, uh, can be managed. Um, and uh, yeah, we, because we love to have. Uh, second thing regarding writing, I think writing is nothing, just spillover of reading. Uh, let her read. Let her read as much as she wants. You don't force writing. Automatically, uh, um, it will spill out. It won't. You can't contain it. There will be a moment. So I was listening to uh, Sudha Murthy and uh, uh, yeah, Sudha Murthy's interview, and I completely uh, resonated with that when she said that you know, uh, just like a mother's milk, it start, it's it's it bursts out. It can't. You can't hold it. um similarly when when you are in that writing flow you can't hold it it has to go, get out from you and uh, so let, if she is in readings or let her be there let her let her right now she is just absorbing let her absorb and she will find her voice she will it will automate you will you will just mark my voice of it sir you will return to me one day and say that yes this exactly this happened um and this happens because a reading is the fodder is the food for thought and let her thought nurture and build up and let her let her try to you know gauge and then writing will automatically second thing is whenever a young editors program is happening next uh bhavya can you please take source email id uh, i don't know if i have i have his latest one but uh, uh yeah we will reach out to you because that is uh, the writing program and the second one that we have is uh, we are coming up uh, with the introduction to script writing and we are coming up with introduction to poetry as well so these two programs are the one we are building curriculum like right now at the back end and uh, uh, yeah so um, because i believe uh, the future is going to be of the storytellers and um, yeah and research has proved that if if we just um, check the data so and uh, story storytelling like script writing is a beautiful thing that i i uh, i myself you know uh, loved it when i learned about it and then science behind it because coming from science background i was look at the scientific way to do things um so i think if she is interested we can do that poetry is another thing that uh, introduction to poetry and uh, timings we will watch out but young editors program i will definitely recommend you because that's something specifically core on writing the basic is the writing So, uh, Bhavya and uh, Pallavi just be in uh, touch with uh, Shobhit sir, and uh, we'll keep in mind. We'll reach out to you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Deepika has uh, raised her hand. Hi, Deepika. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yeah. Uh, actually, the problem is that uh, my kids have interest in a few subjects, and for certain subjects, they do not just feel like. you know taking up the book also so it is with hindi with sanskrit and subjects like that i am talking precisely of the subjects not general reading stuff i don't know if you are taking it in the webinar or not but how can i manage it you know they just do not want to uh, pick up the books of hindi and sanskrit otherwise they are fine like uh, science and mathematics they are good with but otherwise what should i do for that i'm the wrong person to ask this i would say don't do anything so my elder one she hated science and maths and uh, and she was very good very good at it but she didn't want to do it and uh, since fifth six she was very clear i had to take humanities i had to do this i had to do that i was like okay fine and uh, so i used to just uh, just give her like said i don't know like till 10th you have to manage it just pass ho jaye bachche please <laughs> because you know we all are we all are we all are uh, 
how do I put it? We have our likes and dislikes. We are unique beings. We have our own. Um, how do you challenge that? And we have uh, we have uh, been bombarded because uh, the formal education system is like it's a box. You have to do this, 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 this. There is no uh, now with new things. Maybe it will change. So yeah, just tell them, okay, fine. I don't mind. You just you just pass this subject. So maybe you study in the end for it. Only thing that you have to do is just uh, pass it. That's it. Why to pressurize them and why to make them uh, study something? Just think about it, Deepika. If someone asks me that uh, you study quantum physics and I don't like it, for example. So if I cannot do it or if someone tells me, you know, go and do karaoke because it's lovely and someone forces me to do it. If I'm not comfortable, if I don't like it, I won't want to do that. So how can I force... Uh, anyone, including my child, unless and until it's like something fatal, something that is related to their health, then of course, you know, uh, we we should enforce our parent or uh, this. But otherwise, I don't think that. Uh, but that's my personal uh, opinion. I mean, I'm very cool in that way. Like, uh, I don't think uh, it, it's the right way. Uh, how we all have had. Uh, favorite subjects and favorite teachers and that's okay if we you know we are we don't like few subjects it's absolutely fine just uh just ensure just talk out to them uh just tell them that this how this is how the system is you have to uh you have to get some good grades you have to just manage these subjects so you will not be studying it in higher studies so that's okay i think that's a way right right thank you so much ma'am most welcome Okay, three more minutes if anyone else wants to join. Um, any other questions? I think everybody is really clear on the session. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm so good. I'm, I'm, uh, um, so my only wish and last thoughts here are that uh, just follow the curiosity and uh, follow your curiosity as well and follow your child's curiosity and respect the uniqueness of your child. Mm, respect, for, respect them for who they are and I think trust them. Uh, when, when our parents trust us and pr trust our choices, um, I think uh, our children bloom more. Um, that that's what I, as a parent, have learned uh, the hard way, definitely. Uh, but uh, yeah, and uh, teenagers have live in their zone. It's hard to be a teenager today. Very hard in the world that they are living in. They are bombarded with so much uh, sociological and uh, even emotional turmoils that they face, psychological turmoils that they face. So yes. Um, yes, Mr. Gupta, I would say yes, because even if uh, the child is, even if uh, the child is not reading, anyways, the child is on screen. So when I said that, focus on what sort of learning, you know, in, reading is not important. More than reading, what is important? What is your child learning? If he, he or she is learning music, great. That's another way of learning, you know. Uh, so yes. If uh, screen and Kindle has a uh, Kindle has a uh, Kindle doesn't have that blue screen that uh, that impacts our eyes. That's why Kindle is a separate device that uh, that has been created. So Kindle is great. Audiobooks are great. Uh, visual graphics are great. Anime is great. I'm a big, big, big anime fan. If you haven't ever watched any one of you like uh, try Ghibli watching Ghibli movies uh, production house by Japan and uh, try exploring the. Uh, uh, books and movies from different cultures that they open a whole new perspective. So yes, I I, I believe yes, uh, this generation is a generation of technology. So they must embrace technology. And I, I love my paper bags. <laughs> I always carry them. But uh, I would say yes, Kindle, yeah, they can go ahead with Kindle. Yeah, graphic novels are great, of course. And uh, uh, then, uh, like I, I am aware UNESCO NGIP is uh, working, uh, uh, creating uh, games uh, as the new books 
of the next generation you know they are working on that so that that's we, the world that we are entering is like the world we were born with or was 20 years ago that will become obsolete for sure so most welcome so um okay thank you giggles that that's a very cute name yeah, gamifying education is a cool approach. Yeah, it's it's turning out gaming is a huge industry, and they are trying to use this uh, uh, the interest of you know uh, children into learning as well. So yes, teaching them. Uh, I, I know you know, I've been closely working with UNESCO and GIAP, so I know that uh, they have created games uh, to inculcate kindness, to inculcate empathy. Uh, compassion among students using games as to so i i'm not sure the data has to be out how much that is successful but yes the world is moving to you know if i may say another quantum level that won't be an exaggeration uh okay so we are one minutes up uh i would not like to keep you guys for long thank you so much for joining uh thank you to each one of you and I, I hope you like this session. We try to do our best and uh, um, continue blessing us. Uh, join um, you know, Redu in different formats. Uh, we do do a lot of work with reading and writing. You can reach out to us. Uh, I hope Bhavya has shared our email ID. And uh, just uh, I hope feedback back form has been shared. Uh, I was not just checking the chats. In case it hasn't been, uh, we will mail it to you as well. Please send your feedback so that we know uh, how to improvise ourselves next time. It was great meeting you. Thank you for joining us. And have a very good evening. Happy weekend. Thank you.